Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to talk about another classic circuit you should know, and that's called the hysteretic oscillator. And to make our hysteretic oscillator, we're going to use our old friend, the 555 timer. But we're going to set it up a little bit differently than we usually do. So I guess the first thing we should talk to, talk about, pardon me, is um, what's hysteresis? The easiest explanation, the one that I think of, you know, keep front in my mind, hysteresis is a dead zone. It's a period in, in a circuit where nothing's really happening. The actual definition is the phenomenon in which the value of a physical property lags behind changes in the effect causing it. Yeah, I gotta look that up on my phone. I can't remember all that kind of stuff. So anyway, our hysteretic oscillator using the 555 timer is three things. First, it is a type of a relaxation oscillator. And check out my oscillators playlist if you uh, want to know more about that. It is also a form of an A-stable multi-vibrator. And finally, it's also, if I can spell, a Schmidt trigger. So it is all of these things rolled into one. Now, why is it a Schmidt trigger? Well, let's take a look down here. Pretend this is our oscilloscope. Here's VCC, here's ground, here's one third, here's two thirds. So when our capacitor charges, it's gonna reach that two thirds point, discharge down to one third, charge back up to two-thirds, discharge down to one-third, like that. So what we have here is all this dead zone. And then, through the magic of our Schmidt trigger, what we end up with is a digital signal that now looks like this, a square wave. But notice, it doesn't go rail to rail. And that is simply a function of the 555 timer. So let's look at the circuit here real quick. Here's our 555 timer. We're going to power this with 9 volts. Now there is a little bit of, a, I don't want to call it a phase difference. The wave is not particularly square. It's a square wave, but the uh, the mark in space is a little bit different. If you raise the voltage, it will get closer to being 50%. If you lower it, it'll spread up. It'll spread farther apart. Nine volts is a pretty decent place to be. So we have our 555 timer. Pin eight, of course, goes to VCC. Pin one goes to ground. Now normally we use our discharge and our threshold, our trigger and our control all together to create our oscillation. In this case, our discharge, pin 7, is left disconnected. Pin 2, our threshold, is connected to pin 6 like it is in all of our, our 555 oscillators. Okay? Now, uh, pin 5, our control pin, is also left disconnected. Oh, I forgot the right reset up here. Our reset is held high. There's our basic setup. Now, our output is going to come over here to this point between our two diodes, D1 and D2, green and red. They each have a 1K current limiting resistor on them. But now here is the interesting point. We're going to take a pull off of uh, pin 3 before we get to those diodes. Bring it over and we're going to run it through a 10K variable pot and another 10K. This R3 is really optional. 
you can get rid of it but it's going to make the chip run hotter it just helps a little bit when the capacitor shorts the 555 to ground which is what is happening here our capacitor at 10 microfarad as it charges and discharges it occasionally does short 555 to ground and you know it's just going to run hot when we do that so let's bring in the actual circuit pardon my substitution box I cannot believe it but I don't have a single 10k standard resistor anyway there's our 555 timer there's pin 8 going to VCC well, let's zoom in here might make it a little bit easier pin 1 going to ground there's our output pin 3 going to the point between our two diodes there's a 1k there and a 1k there those are our current limiting resistors for the diodes here's our 10k pot and then coming out of here it goes to a 10k resistor which feeds back into pin 6 which also in parallel goes to this uh, 10 microfarad capacitor which goes to ground now we can do a little bit of fine tuning here with this pot and adjust our frequency here a little bit but if you really want to change the frequency what you can do is simply swap out the uh, 10 microfarad capacitor if you want it slower like here's a hundred microfarad capacitor it will be 10 times slower or you could put in a one microfarad capacitor and it will be 10 times faster so I guess that's the basics of it what do you say we put it on the scope and have a look alrighty so I'm gonna probe that connection point between the two diodes and there you go you can see we're in a frequency of just under 3 Hertz and you can see how our mark and our space is different Now let me move over here. I'm all tangled up. Hold on. Now there is our capacitor charging and discharging. And you can see how it's staying in that. I don't have a good contact, that's why it's so ugly you can see how it's staying in that one third to two third range let me go back and hit the point between the two diodes and you can now see how we're all the way down to ground and almost all the way up to nine volts 7.84 volts to be exact pretty cool huh so that's what it looks like pretty cool little circuit let me tell you what let me uh Let's pull out the 10 microfarad capacitor and we'll put in a hundred and that way you guys can see how much the frequency changes. Now I'll crank it up to its fastest speed. So one of the neat things, you know, about using the 555 to do this is if we look at the circuit here, what's happening is in one half of the wave, D1 is able to pull down and sync through pin 3, sync its current through pin 3, and on the second half of the wave, D2 is able to be sourced through pin 3. That's a neat little feature. And this is a neat little circuit. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. That's it. I'm out. Because we're supposed to have a major snowstorm. Although, it's 30 degrees and there ain't nothing happening outside. Peace.